I guarantee that by watching this series of videos, you or someone close to you will benefit. Either you'll be able to find more money, more benefits, or if you have evaluated and applied for every single plan and program and system out there, uh, which uh, my experience of a few decades within the, uh, the federal government and state governments, um, I've never met anybody that uh, knows about all of them, and I'm going to cover pretty much all of them over the next series of videos. Um, and if, uh, if you have evaluated in your particular case or for those of your loved ones, uh, whether you're entitled or eligible for any of the plan, all of the plans, at least the video will provide peace of mind that you did in fact check out everything to make your life easier. But like I said, uh, you'll be the first one. I don't think I've ever, ever met in my decades anybody that is uh, known about every single program. And so today we're uh, going to talk about a few of them, and then I'll make another video and a few more, and then a few more, and then a few more on other videos. If you have any suggestions, recommendations, your personal experiences yourself, you have applied for this, you have applied for this other thing for you, your loved ones, whoever, then put it in the comment below and tell us your experience and any tips, tricks, and secrets you have. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, uh, where do I start them? One day, an 18-wheeler truck driver walked into a uh, diner uh, to have uh, some breakfast. And uh, wait a second, a little, maybe that's going back a little bit too far. That's uh, my my mother and father. Um, he was a long-distance truck driver. My uh, mother uh, worked at uh, a breakfast diner. So anyway, that's a little bit far, a little bit too far back. Um, I, I joined the Marine Corps at 17. Um, became a sergeant in the Marine Corps, and then I did some other stuff uh, for a while, um, some all kinds of interesting stuff after you get out of the Marine Corps trying to find your way. I eventually became a family service specialist at the Department of Welfare and Social Services, um, and then I got hired by the Social Security Administration. Uh, I worked for there a couple of decades, and eventually I came to run the third busiest office in the country. I retired early, even though it doesn't look like I'm, I retired early, but I did retire a few years early. I got, you know, I figured there's something else I need to do um, with the, the whole COVID thing. Um, I think a service was kind of declining. A lot of people were missing benefits. And uh, so I retired. I figured I'd just relax. And uh, after about two days, that ended. And uh, here I am doing crazy videos, trying to help people throughout the country, make sure they get everything they're entitled to. Um, sometimes I call myself America's leading government benefits expert. I've thrown it out there a few times. It sounds, you know, trying to, you know, um, throw around some titles, former social security manager, former sergeant, whatever the case may be. People have uh, kind of latched onto that, that kind of the moniker of uh, America's leading government benefits expert. Um, I haven't had anybody challenge me to say, oh yeah, no, I'm, you're, you're not the leading one. I'm the leading one. So if you nobody know out, anybody out there with more experience and expertise um, in the third busiest office in the country, I've helped, uh, you know, millions of people um, navigate uh, the bureaucracy, um, social security, retirement, disability, Medicare, Medicaid, TANF, uh, vet, some veterans of benefits, um, so, uh, if you know anybody out there with more experience and expertise, let me know, put it down in the comments and, uh, I'll say I'm number two, America's leading, uh, we'll put that guy up as number one guy or gal. All right. So the, let's, uh, um, like I said, this is going to be a multi series. So it's just going to be uh, kind of you and me talking through here. Uh, as you know, there are a lot of people out there struggling. The average social security check is about $1,800. A lot of people are receiving a lot less than that. If this, these series of videos, if they don't apply to you, if you look, you start listening to it, you know, you listen to it five or 10 minutes and say, oh yeah, well, that's okay. I, you know, I make, you know, $3,000 a month. Plus I got, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars in my 401k. So, you know, Ed's not going to be able to help me on any 
this is not only for you. So please, 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 I know there's someone else around you, a relative, a friend, a coworker, the, the, the waitress at the local diner, person down the street. Don't just think about your particular situation. Think about those around you. I guarantee that there's someone around you that's going to need this information and share it with them. And they will be forever in your debt because they will be able to get extra benefits or extra money. Or like I said, at the very, very least, a kind of peace of mind that uh, they did in fact, did in fact, you know, evaluate every program, every plan out there that they could possibly get to, uh, to make their life a little bit easier. So please, um, so get your coffee and sit down and uh, I'll, I'll break these videos up into about 20, 30 minutes. So, uh, so they, you know, the, the whole series, once people start commenting and say, okay, oh yeah, you forgot one. And so comment down below and say, okay, well, there's this other program in our particular state, please keep adding those. Um, and uh, we can, uh, you know, make this a, a one-stop resource, a series of videos Hopefully, we'll be able to help out. Um, another way you could help is subscribe, comment, like, share. The YouTube algorithm likes all that. So all you do is subscribe and like and comment. And YouTube, the algorithm, sends it out to more people. And you just might have helped some you know, elderly person in Tennessee or Texas or Oregon um, because the video was able to reach them because you did that. Um, if you want to uh, support us and, uh, you know, give me a, um, you know, a couple of dollars or something for coffee or a beer or something like that, you just click the, uh, the, the thanks button. Um, uh, my, my kind of nickname in the Marine Corps, even when I was young was one beer weir. So I've always been a lightweight. So, uh, yeah, anyway, so there's that. Um, all right, so let's uh, let's start going on. This is not in, in no particular order. Um, these are just all these different programs. Like I said, I've got dozens and dozens and dozens of them, and we'll break them up into several different videos. Um, and then I'm going to put um, a number on each one. I'll put it up on the screen. And if there's any corresponding details or websites or anything like that, I'll put it in the description down below. So number one is let's make sure this, I've done many, many videos on this. So if you're new to my channel, I've done many, many videos on this. Make sure you're getting the correct amount from Social Security to begin with. Okay? How do you do that? Is click on number one below. I set up a website. Um, one of the, the issues I've had is um, I get a lot of people calling me and I tell them, I just did a video on your question last week. I just did a video on your question last month. The, the, the question you have is the, my very first video I just did a year ago when I first started doing these crazy videos. Um, so 90% of the questions people have, I've already made a video of it. But the problem I find is uh, I've done hundreds of videos and I intend to continue doing these videos. If you all support me and you like these videos and you want me to do more, I will continue to, um, to uh, do as many as I can as, uh, as long as I'm you know, kicking and breathing. And I will continue to do more, but it's, it's difficult in terms of wading through the hundreds of videos I'm going to do and all the videos out there from all these other people that call themselves, you know, social security experts. There, there's a company that does a couple of day online training. And then after you do the training, you get a cute little, you know, um, certificate that says you're now a social security, I think it's a social security expert advisor or something like that. Um, yeah, you just, there's too many, there's 20,000 pages of policy that social security alone, and, and then even, you know, more for Medicare, um, and then Medicaid and all the rest of it. You, you just can't learn that in two days. So there's a lot of incorrect information out there. So that's one of the reasons I started doing these videos in the first place is because there's just so much incorrect information out there. Um, all right. So super long story short, where am I getting to? I set up a website. 
go to mygovexpert, so it's my government, mygovexpert.com, and you go to the website, and you it's, it's completely free. You create a playlist. So it asks you a few questions. Um, you know, it asks you, you know, how much uh, you make per year because that determines, you know, whether the playlist that you create, you know, if you're making, you know, under 25,000, it's going to show you type of Medicaid and other type of financial assistance. But if you put your over hundred thousand dollars, then it's not going to show you a bunch of, you know, Medicaid and financial assistance type of videos. So I ask you that in what state you in, you're in and, and how old you are, what, you know, range you are, are you closer, you know, to Medicare, are you early retirement or you're, you know, you're in your thirties or forties or fifties. So there's videos for everybody. So you answer the few questions, and then it gives you a playlist that I basically curated for your particular situation. And then you just watch those. And like I said, 90% of the questions people have will be an answered in those playlists. And if, they're, and if they're not, then you come back to this YouTube channel or any of my videos and you say, hey, you, know, you didn't answer this question. Um, and then I'll make another video of it and add that to... Um, the, uh, the playlist. All right. But, um, so go to my gov expert, set up a playlist and make sure, um, number one, you're getting what you're in. You're supposed to be getting in terms of your social security check. Um, in the video, I talk about, uh, you know, um, whether your benefit was calculated correctly. Um, one of the big things, particularly with the kind of the, uh, the popularity of, um, filing online, which is great. File online. I don't want to discourage people from filing online. But the problem is um, if you get, you know, 62, 63, 64, and you're like, okay, I'm time, it's time for me to retire. I, you file a retirement claim, but maybe you shouldn't have filed a retirement claim. Maybe you should have filed a disability claim or retirement and a disability claim, or maybe you should, have filed, you should have filed a spousal claim. Maybe you should have filed a survivor claim. Um, so that's one of the issues. And because when you file online, sometimes the claim specialist at Social Security, which I, my office, I uh, ran, we had about 100 employees, and uh, all the offices throughout the country are completely inundated. And I just hate for you know your particular case to be kind of you know, fall through the cracks. And five, 10 years later, it turns out that, oh, wait a second, you shouldn't have filed for retirement, because I hear this all the time. You shouldn't have filed for retirement. You should have filed for disability first. Um, because once you hit your full retirement age, whatever your full retirement age, depending on the year you were born, once you hit your full retirement age, you can't file for disability anymore, essentially. And those people that are on disability, automatically get switched to retirement benefits once they hit their full retirement age. So once you're on full retirement age, nobody in the country receives disability anymore. It's automatically switched to retirement. The, the check and everything stays the same. Nothing really changes. It's just you're able to work now. Um, so make sure you filed for the right program or if you're planning to file soon, make sure you file for the right program. And again, go on to MyGovExpert set up a playlist, watch the videos. If you have any questions, put it in the comments on one of the videos and I try to answer them um, as best as I can. And then, like I said, if it's something uh, that uh, a new question, I'll make a new video. All right, so, um, oh, and the, on the, the, um, the, the questionnaire to create an account, again, is all free. Um, it asks for the phone number. I'm gonna delete that phone number thing. You don't have to put your, you can make up a phone number, you know, 1-800-555-1212. So I'm not gonna call you. And I'm not gonna give out your information. The only reason I want you to create an account, you have to put your email in there is um, when there's changes, if you're in a particular state and you're in a particular category and there's something, you know, a big change coming down the pike, um, then I'll notify you by email, but I'm not going to give out your email or anything. The only people that have access to it is, are, are me and uh, my, uh, my son. So we're not going to give it to anybody else unless you tell us to, you know, whatever. Um, all right. So that's number one. Number two is um, a lot of people are struggling um, and they don't realize they can actually work. So I get calls on that all the time. 
when you're on retirement, you can in fact work. So for this year, for 2024, you are able to work and make up to $22,320. That's if you're uh, the years before your full retirement age. So from 62, let's say you're 67, the year you turn 67, that kind of changes to 59,000 and some change. But before that, so you're 62, 63, 64, 65, you're able to make $22,320. And uh, um, a lot of people don't understand exactly how that whole thing works. And one of the reasons is, is when you go in there and file for retirement, if you do it online, the, the, the employee doesn't tell you about it. And, or if you go in there, they don't, sometimes they don't have time or they're lazy and they don't spend the time to tell you exactly all the repercussions of, uh, you know, what you're doing and, and how to, you know, um, take advantage of, you know, regulations, particularly in terms of work. Okay. So you're allowed to work while you're receiving retirement benefits. If you go over that amount, if you go over the $22,320, social security holds back $1 for every $2 you go over. So if you retire at 62, 63 years old, and you decide to go back to work, you said as retirement thing is not for me, kind of like me, um, then, you know, if you're going to make, you know, $50,000, $60,000, you're going to be quite a bit over and Social Security is going to hold back $1 for every $2 you go over. And if you don't report it, if you don't stop your checks, then what happens the following year when your employer notifies the IRS and the IRS notifies Social Security and Social Security system, the computer system looks at it and says, hey, this person's collected benefits, but they went $20,000 over. So we need to hold back $10,000 and they'll send you a nasty gram and says, hey, pay us our $10,000 now. And obviously, you know, most people can't cut a check for $10,000. So you can actually set up a, uh, a payment plan. Um, I've got a video. Guess what? I've got a video on that. So if you go and create a playlist, there's a whole bunch of supplementary videos as well um, on different stuff like that. So just go in there. Um, and then once you hit your full retirement age, the year you, hurt, you hit your full retirement age, then, you know, you can work a lot more, 59520 Anything over that, they hold back $1 for every $3 you go over. Okay. So if you decide to go back to work, uh, you can notify Social Security if you're going to go considerably over that amount. Um, if, you know, you're just going to go over a thousand dollars or $2,000 or something, and you're like, you know, I, I just want to continue to get my checks. And when they send me the, you know, the, the, the bill and, you know, January, February, March, April, well, next year, I'll just go ahead and cut a check and, you know, get that paid for. Um, you can do it that way too, if you want. The one thing a lot of people will mistake and a lot of people are losing money is because the, the first year you collect retirement benefits, say, let's say you're 63 years old and you start collecting in July. Starting in July, you're limited, you're limited to the amount of money you can make. So it's $22,320 divided by 12 months. So that's the, the month limit. But before that, so from January until June, it doesn't matter how much you made. It only, you're only limited to when you start collecting your benefits. So a lot of people I've talked to people all the time and they said, oh, I didn't know I could work. I, 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 yeah, I could really use that extra money. But because, you know, before I started collecting my check, I made $60,000. And so I was over that year. So I didn't work. A lot of people are out there losing money because of that. So you can make a million dollars a year from January until June. You make a million billion dollars. doesn't matter. Once you start collecting your Social Security, then you're limited to the amount of money you can make. So there's that. And you're on dis if you're on disability, then it's, uh, it's even more complicated. You've got the ticket to work. Um, you can call them up. You're basically allowed to work and collect disability, but you have to limit your work. Anything over this year, 2024, it's $1,110. And it's, it's, you know, this is kind of an insider tip trick and secret it's not a good idea to go right to the limit. You know, if the limit is, you know, $1,110 or, you know, $1,200 next year, whatever the case may be, 
to go, okay, then I'll go out there and work till twelve hundred dollars every every month, and I'll be good. Sometimes that kind of sets up a red flag to Social Security and says, "Well, you know, this person, you know, they're disabled for Social Security. The Social Security is the inability to work, and this person is working. That's fine. You can work kind of part time, make a little bit extra money to supplement your disability, but there's that limit." And if you go to it, go up to that limit continuously, then Social Security says, ah, this person is probably can work more, but they know how much they can make. So they're just working right to that limit. So it kind of, you know, jumps up a red flag. So it's good to kind of you know, stay under there a little bit. So, but when you're on disability, the first, you have a, what's called a trial work period, the first nine months. Um, for in it, you know, if you're on, you've been on disability for a year, two years, five years, ten years, or something, and you say, "Well, I, I like to try to go back to work," so it's called a trial work period. So you try to go back to work, and you can make a million bucks a month for the first nine months. And if you're able to make a million bucks a month, you know, hey, thanks button down below there, you know, coffee, beer. Um, but uh, um, if after the nine months. You say, well, you know, I tried to go back to work. It just didn't work out. So no harm, no foul. Your Social Security benefits won't be stopped or anything like that. So you have that nine month trial work period because Social Security wants you, you know, wants people to go back to work if they're able to. It helps the trust fund. It helps you because you're able to make more money, go back to work and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but after that, then there is the extended period of eligibility, which is another 36 months. And then if you go over a certain amount, then your benefit will stop for that month and back and forth, back and forth. So the best way to do it is always keep a record of how much you're making. Um, call the ticket to work. It's, a, it's, a, a, it's an organization that uh, is contracted with the Social Security Administration that helps you um, you know, make sure if you're on disability, make sure you're doing the right thing. So again, if this doesn't apply to you, I guarantee there's someone around you that it does apply to. So share this um, with them. Share this video with them. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep on going here, but share this video with them. Share it at your senior center. Um, share this video on my channel with uh, your local news. Um, I like to get out there and get more people information so they can navigate the bureaucracy and people can get what they're entitled to, what they're eligible for, what they, you know, paid into the system. Um, so if you got any connections at the local newspaper or news, I'd love to do a, you know, online kind of interview and tell them about our, uh, the channel and the website to, uh, to help people out. So, um, yeah, please share. All right. So that's number one and number two, um, number three. The Federal Communications Commission Affordable Connectivity Program. Wow, that's a mouthful. Um, a lot of people uh, are missing this. It's basically uh, FCC, Federal Communications Commission, they have a program. The Congress decided several years ago that uh, you know nowadays with technology, um, people on uh, uh, Social Security, the disabled, seniors, uh, pretty much everybody needs connection to the internet to set up, uh, you know, to set up a doctor's appointments and go online to ssa.gov or medicare.gov or whatever the case may be. Um, but a lot of people, unfortunately, can't afford, you know, uh, internet connection. So they established this program. It used to be a lot more. They just, they reduced it in the last few years, but it, hey, it's $30 a month. So how do you get that? Um, you can go on to FCC.com and kind of wiggle your way through the kind of the website, which I don't really recommend. Uh, most government websites are just, you know, it, it, it's made for, you know, 300 million plus Americans that have all kinds of different issues. So it's, it's uh, government websites are difficult to navigate. That's one of the reasons I'm doing these videos. But uh, the quickest, the easiest way I've found, and most people have found, is to just call your internet provider. Call the internet provider you currently have and say, hey, do I qualify, do I qualify for the FCC program? And if they give you a hard time, you know, might want to consider switching providers. However, as of this taping, I don't know why we call it taping, but as of this recording right now, 
um, because of the government shutdown, potential government shutdown, it might be a, a budget issue. They, uh, FCC doesn't have money for this program, but that hopefully will change in about a week or two. And but, uh, you know, all these government programs are dependent on on budgeting, on uh, the uh, money being provided, allocated by Congress. But in this particular one, um, this is unusual. Of I've, I've uh, recommended this to people for years, and they've never had a problem with it. Um, so hopefully, it's just a temporary thing. And speaking of uh, kind of government shutdown, so. Anytime there's a government shutdown, um, in terms of Social Security, you really don't have to worry about it. I've shut down, you know, my office um, several, several times over the, you know, the decades I, uh, I ran um, the office. But the shutdown for Social Security is only very, very partial, very, very small part of it. The only thing, because people need their checks. And, you know, people have still come in and they need their checks. They lost their checks. They need to file for benefits, whatever the case may be. So this, in terms of the Social Security Administration, everything is still going on. When there's a government shutdown, the only thing that really affects anything for Social Security is getting a new Social Security card. So if you need a new Social Security card during a government shutdown, then unfortunately you're kind of out of luck. Sometimes they do make very limited exceptions. So if you need a new social security card, the IR, or excuse me, the, uh, the, the immigration for immigration appointment, or, you know, um, people, uh, uh, you know, recruiters come in, military recruiters said, Hey, you know, this guy needs to head off to boot camp here. So we need a social security card. Or, um, if you have a, a job opportunity and you need to feed your family and you need the social security card, then, you know, very, 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 very limited exceptions. So if, uh, if you need one during a government shutdown, it doesn't hurt to try. So that's number three. Um, number four is low income home energy assistance program. And it's the government, they got to have a super long uh, name and acronym for it. It's basically energy assistance program and low income. So if you are already receiving SSI, which is supplemental security income, and that's another thing. Um, that's why I, I, on these videos, I'm, I'm not going to put, uh, I usually put a table of contents and I put some other stuff, but, um, some other text and, you know, on, on the video, but, I'm going to intersperse there. And again, there's no particular order. And remember, you are watching these videos for not only you, you're watching it for other people. So if I all of a sudden mention something, you know, hopefully a light goes off in your head and you're like, oh, you know, John down the, down the right. Oh, Jane, the, you know, the, the lady at the, uh, the barbershop, she might be interested in this. So again, you're, we're, we're all in this together. If you're receiving supplemental security income, SSI, and this is a welfare-based program, a needs-based program, SSI, supplemental security income. So there's SSA, Social Security Administration, and then there's SSI, supplemental security income. That is a program within SSA that it used to be a state welfare. Each state had their welfare programs. The Social Security Administration took it over in the early 1970s. Um, so there is obviously, you know, state welfare programs, but SSI is administered by the Social Security Administration. Um, so it's for people that, you know, if you're in retirement and you're only receiving, you know, $600 from retirement based on your work and how they determine your, how much you get is your high 35 years of earnings. A lot of people mess, you know, mistake that. And they think that, you know, it's your last year or last five years or last 10 years. No, Social Security determines your benefit amount by the high 35 years. So if you've got someone that uh, her, their high 35 years, for whatever reason, they're only receiving, you know, five or $600 in retirement, what they can do is um, call Social Security and say, I would also like to file for SSI. And it really depends on the year. It's about $900 or so. So um, let's say the, the SSI is make it easy, $900. So you get SSI, $400. And then because you're already getting social security, your retirement or disability, whatever the case may be, you're getting $500 from there. And then to bring it up to $900, you get another $400 from SSI. 
And then when you're on SSI, you're, that means you are categorically eligible. I'll say that again, categorically eligible. That is, uh, again, I worked at welfare before I worked for the Social Security Administration. Um, and basically that you would be categorically eligible for different benefits from the states, Medicaid and uh, food stamps and things like that. So people that are in SSI can also be eligible for other things, including the low income energy assistance program we were just talking about. So if you're receiving SSI, if you're receiving SNAP food stamps, TANF, temporary assistance to needy families, then you are automatically eligible for energy assistance. Uh, in terms of money for 2024, um, if you your household income is, is under 21,870, you qualify. If you've got two people and your yearly income is under $29,580, you qualify. These are all before taxes. Um, so energy assistance. The easiest way again to apply for this particular one is I'll put a link in, in uh, so this is number four. I'll put a link under number four there. But another easy way is to um, call your energy company and say, I want to apply for the energy assistance program. Um, so hopefully you have a, a pen and paper and you know you write number one and you write, oh, okay, this is good. I, I need this information. I'll refer back to this video to you know see number one is. I'll put the numbers up there. And you'll put, you know, number two, ah, it doesn't apply to me. Number three, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Jane, yeah, Jane, I, I need to share this to Jane. Number four, oh, yeah, Jim, yeah, Jim at the, the gas station. So hopefully you got a pen and paper there, and uh, we're going through this checklist, and uh, we're going to make you a hero in your local community. All right, uh, let's see what else here. Section eight, number five, section eight housing. That is by... This is, a, this is an unfortunate one, um, the, uh, the housing of urban development, and there's just not enough Section 8 housing out there, uh, unfortunately. I, you know, talk to, that's probably the biggest deficiency um, of support for low-income um, populace in the United States is affordable housing. Um, you know, there's a market and, you know, and everybody started doing Airbnb that raised the rates. I get calls continuously um, from people that, oh, yeah, I was in this house, you know, for 10 years and they were paying $400 or $500 or $1,500 or whatever the case may be. And everything was beautiful. And uh, because that was the market, then Airbnb hit and everybody wanted to kick people out so they could make more money on Airbnb. And it looks as though that kind of the Airbnb is kind of diving again. So hopefully prices go back down. But uh, um, it's been, been my experience that, uh, yeah, it's, it's tough out there um, for affordable housing. And there's such a high demand that depends where you are in the country. Um, if you have difficulty um, with housing and paying for rent, apply for Section 8. But the problem is people are on these lists for years. Um, but there are exceptions. So apply, give them all your information. If you're, you're disabled, you're a veteran, um, you're on oxygen, uh, whatever the case may be. A lot of these Section 8 authorities have kind of pocket listings um, where for specific types of cases, they have, you know, a few or so places that they're just kind of, they just keep in their pocket for these, you know, specific emergency type of cases. So if you call, you know, you talk to someone and, and, you know, Oh yeah, there's a you know ten year waiting list or a three year waiting list or some outrageous thing. You talk to a friend. Oh, so don't apply because there's a three or four wait you know a year waiting. Apply, 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 apply. And as I say with all the programs, all these programs, always apply. And then if you're approved, then it's a beautiful thing. And if not, then you know it is it is unfortunately what it is. 
Um, I wish there's more out there for, for people that are struggling. But um, so apply for Section 8 because you just might fit within these particular categories and they just might have one in their pocket. And it also depends on the time of year as well. Federal budgeting, you know, October 31st, and they got the new budget. And so sometimes, you know, money comes down. Um, that's, you know, when I worked at Social Security, I ran the office there. It, it's amazing. And one day we'd have money and the next day we wouldn't have money. And then so it, it really depends. And I'll, I'll get into some of the repercussions of, of that here in a little bit. All right. So that's number five. Let's keep going down the list. Oh, um, uh, number six, this is kind of going back to Social Security again in terms of filing for benefits. I, uh, I found money um, for this one young lady. Um, it's been a couple of months now. Um, $63,000. And so she got a, a lump sum check of $63,000 um, because I told her, informed her of her particular case. It's called protective filing. And I did a video on this and it's, I'm going to have to start blowing stuff up. I mean, putting Mentos in, a, in a, a swimming pool or, you know, cat videos or something, because the videos I do, I, I think, you know, I think they're helpful. <laughs> um, I, I hope they are, but I'm, you know, I only get a few hundred views and there, I've got one that's got about 300,000 views. I don't know how that took off so well, but most of them has only got a few you know, a few hundred or a few thousand views. And I think we're kind of amusing ourselves to death. It's one of my favorite books by a guy named Neil Postman. I'm, I'm, you know, we're, we're interested in, you know, celebrity gossip and cat videos and, you know, you know, which is fun. I, you know, I'm a, you know, I watch that stuff too. Um, it's good, you know, de-stressor. Um, but you know, the, the, the social media websites, I think they also serve a purpose. I think this is a good purpose that they serve is they get information out there. You know, normally, you know, if this was 20 years ago, I could, I couldn't do this. Um, but social media, there is a benefit to social media and hopefully you agree that this is a benefit. If you do, please, thanks down below. You know? um, but yeah, and, and if you share and like and all that kind of stuff, it'll go out to more people. The algorithm will pick up and more people will get it. But uh, um, the video I did on protective filing. Protective filing is basically um, when you call Social Security. As soon as you pick up the phone, you go into the office, you pick up the phone and say, hey, I have a question about disability, retirement, survivor benefits, yada, yada, yada. You're, that is essentially a protective filing. So if you call and schedule an appointment and then turns out, you know, that particular appointment and something happens, so you don't go to the appointment and you don't go there for, you know, three months until three months later, um, you're protected. So if you call in January on January 15th and you're scheduled for February and then you cancel because something happens, and then you don't go until April or May or something like that, you're protected to January. So you can actually go back and, and when you go into Social Security in April and say, I called you all in January and I want that back pay. So I want to start my benefits in January. And if the claim specialist is there, if they know what they're doing, they will look and say, oh yeah, 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 you called us in January. So, okay, all right, we'll give you the back pay. So that's what happened in this particular situation that uh, she had filed for disability. And she had called a couple of years or uh, it was about 18 months or so earlier. And, uh, but it kind of fell through the cracks and so they found it. And so she got a big chunk of change and I've, there's, I can tell you hundreds of hundreds of stories like that. So protective filing. So watch that video, um, and make sure you get all your back pay. All right. So that's number six. All right. Number seven, um, this is, like I said, there's no particular order. This is it's an important one for people. Libraries. Um, there are some libraries throughout the United States that um, provide Wi-Fi, little pocket Wi-Fi things, so you have Wi-Fi wherever you go. There are some that provide was it the, the Roku stick, so you can watch TV and you know Netflix and HBO and stuff like that. And obviously, libraries are libraries are libraries. And if you go to a library and get a library card, that's how they determine the funding for the library. So you support the libraries and it's a great place. And 
and reading and all that kind of good stuff. So it's a, yeah, it's, you know, um, libraries are awesome. Um, you know, everybody goes online nowadays, but I've got, you know, tons of people that, uh, um, that are homeless, don't have access to the internet. And so they go to the libraries to get access to the internet. So there's that. Um, uh, number eight, um, here's a, it's a, a habitat for humanity. I have a lot of people that contact me and, uh, um, one of the issues is their, their house is, you know, it's, uh, Kind of messed up and they need uh you know a new refrigerator they need an air conditioner they need a ramp or you know for whatever the case may be and this is the one you know jimmy carter you know does the you know building uh the houses and stuff like that so um the habitat for humanity my, my son actually volunteered um for this organization in our hometown for a while and they have kind of a reuse store um, they get donations so if you're looking to donate donate it to them um, in other places, but, uh, um, yeah, Habitat for Humanity, call them up and, uh, see if they'll, you know, repair your window or repair your, your, you know, your bathroom or, or whatever the case may be. So another one out there. All right. Um, number nine. So I got number seven was libraries. Number eight was Habitat for Humanity. Number nine is Medicare. Um, Medicare people are paying for Medicare when they don't need it. I've got a lot of people. All right. So Medicare is administered by the Social Security Administration. Okay? And when you turn 65 years old, or if you're on disability, if you're on disability, after two years of being on disability, you qualify for Medicare. A lot of people on disability don't recognize that, don't know that. And again, I've got a video that you can watch. This is uh, you're approved for disability. Now what? So watch that video. But Medicare, you're supposed to apply when you're 65 years old. However, you don't have to. Okay. So a lot of people apply for Medicare and part A is fine. If you don't have an HSA, which is a health savings account, if you have an HSA and you apply for part A, then you can no longer contribute to the HSA. You can, you can take deductions or, you know, withdraw money, but you can no longer um, put money into an HSA. A lot of the Social Security employees don't know. Social Security employees really aren't educated too much on Medicare. They just kind of sign you up and, and all the other stuff. But the HSA and Part A, they don't really know. And I have a lot of people that apply for Part A and they say, I can't do my HSA anymore. Yeah. So it's unfortunately the employee didn't tell you because unfortunately the employees aren't trained on that. But if you have an HSA then, and if you want to continue, continue to contribute to the HSA, don't sign up for Part A. If you don't have an HSA, then sign up for Part A. It's free. You know, beautiful thing. Part B, on the other hand, you're going to save yourself $170 or so. That's what it is this year is um, if you currently have health insurance from work, either your work or your spouse's current work, and we're not talking COBRA, we're not talking retirement, uh, you know, health insurance or anything like that. We're talking about current work. If you or if your spouse have health insurance, so if your spouse has it and you're on your spouse's health insurance, then you do not have to sign up for Part B, right? Okay? save yourself $170 and change. When you turn 66, 67, 68, and you stop working and stop having health insurance from that current work, then you have eight months to sign up for Part B. Okay? So save yourself the money. I've got so many people that are paying for it and because oh, I was told I had to sign up for Part B. Yes. If you're not, if you don't have health insurance from work, again, this is another thing that social security employees are supposed to tell you when you file, so do you have health insurance from work? And, but some people do, they have health insurance from work and for whatever the case, they do the cost benefit analysis and they say, uh, yeah, you know, my, my health insurance from my work or my wife's work or husband's work or whatever, it's, you know, it's costing this amount of money and it's got this much deductible and it doesn't cover this and doesn't cover that. It's just terrible health insurance. So you can do that cost benefit analysis. And so, okay, hospital part A is free. Hospital part B is, you know, 170 and some change. Um, that's better than what I've got. Um, but part A and part B alone are not enough. 
uh, Part B, for instance, covers 80%. So if you go in a hospital or, or excuse me, if you have a surgery and your surgery is $100,000, then you're, you have to cough up the other $20,000. So a lot of people get other plans above and beyond that. And we'll go into those in detail as well. Another thing is that uh, people stop part B because they can't afford it. Um, there are many types of programs out there um, that will help you. And I'll, I'll get into some of those programs that will help you pay for your part B. But um, a lot of veterans say, hey, I just want to go ahead and start stop part B um, because I got the VA and I'm happy with that. It, it, that's fine. But you, with the understanding that if, if you stop part B because you can't afford the you know $170, or next year, $180, or the year after $190, whatever the case may be. Um, and then you change your mind, or a situation changes, or you move, and you no longer have access to the VA, or you wanted a second opinion, and you decide to go on for Part B, you're going to get penalized for the rest of your life. So before you stop Part B, uh, actually, when you go to Social Security and you say, I want to stop Part B, they give you a form and done this hundreds of thousands of times. It gives you a form and you fill it out, your name, and I want to, you know, it has a big long statement there that you understand the repercussions of stopping Part B. Again, you're penalized 10% for every 12 months. You do not have Part B after you become entitled to it. So think hard and long about stopping Part B. And I'll get into more details on, uh, on Medicare. All right, um, I think that is enough for number one video and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Again, share, like, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. And we'll talk to you soon. Have a beautiful day.